Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Leanne Motley, and I work as lecturer at the University of Johannesburg. I'm also the international lead for the YWP South African chapter and part of the Emerging Water Leaders Career Building Troop, which is why we are here. Today marks our very first interview for Forte Friday, and we are so pleased to welcome you to the first day of this exciting initiative. Without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our first guest, Yuje Lu. Yuje Lu is a professor at Xi'an University in China and is, a and is very passionate about the technical side of wastewater treatment and reuse. I'm sure you are as excited as I am to learn more about this young, passionate and ambitious professional. Welcome UJ. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us. I'll shoot straight to the questions. So working in academia at such an early age, please share a little bit about how this happened. I, uh, I did my bachelor's in China in environmental engineering, I, where I started to be interested in uh, water related uh, technologies and uh, the science. So I, uh, start, I, I did my PhD in the United States. I graduated from Columbia University with a degree, PhD degree in environmental engineering. And my doctoral thesis is about uh, a biological process targeting the nitrogen pollutant in wastewater, which is called denitrification process. Um, from, from there, uh, I, that really, I'm very fascinated about uh, how we human can manipulate bacteria or design a wastewater treatment plants that can help protect our water environment. Uh, then from there, I, uh, I decided after my uh, graduation from uh, Columbia University, I decided to stay in, the, uh, in academia. Uh, and uh, I moved to another university for postdoc. Uh, and during that two year postdoc, I also went to Saudi Arabia for uh, a short period, um, uh, working in the water uh, recycle center there. Uh, and then I started to learn about water uh, recycle and reuse by membrane um, process. Then, um, then that's a typical, uh, typical pathway for someone who wants to uh, work in the in uh, in the in uh, academia. And then, um, 2006, uh, 2014, I received a, an offer from University of Vermont in uh, northeast of the United States. I work in the civil and environmental engineering department for two years as an assistant professor. And then 2016, I moved back to China, joining the Zhejiang University. So I have been working here for uh, almost uh, six years. Uh, so far, I have uh, been very interested and um, I still feel passionate about the research I'm doing. So that's the um, that's the my career path so far. I don't know if I really joined at an early age, but I can see that I followed a typical path for um, for a, pro a professor for a, a junior professor, and I still on my way to um, get tenured. I don't know if you know this uh, process, but. Um, uh, in China, we're gradually uh, using this similar uh, career path as the U United States and it's uh, assistant professor to associate professor and professor. So I'm on my way to, uh, to get tenured. So, so far, that's how uh, my career in academia works. That is so interesting. And it works exactly the same in South Africa as well. So. Um, assistant and then, well, from associate professor straight to professor. So very, very interesting. And you moved around quite a bit, which is also yeah. so, so interesting. Yeah, I graduated and then I did my uh, two postdocs for three years, uh, assistant professor for two years, associate professor for five years now. Wow, wow and so inspiring as well. So if you could give your younger self any advice um, with regards to the water industry, would you, what would you say, what would you do? 
the first suggestion to myself, to my younger self, would be spend one or two years working in an engineering consulting company or a water company. Um, I think that will give you unique experience that will benefit your research in the long run. So that's the first advice. So the second advice is to read more books in other disciplinaries. You know, water research is interdisciplinary subject. So if you read more about biology, chemistry, automatic control, or even artificial intelligence, that can broaden your horizon and enrich your knowledge. I think it's very important for, uh, for someone working in, the, in, uh, in academia because you have to keep things critically and learn new knowledge in a very quick pace. So that would be the two pieces of advice I would give my younger self. Very, very interesting. I totally share your sentiments. I think we have to work harder to get this, you know, bridge between academia and industry um, solidified more because that's that's where the magic is happening, the bridge between the two. And I think we, we forget about it and then we start making up questions in the lab. So I totally, totally agree with you. Thank you for sharing. So in terms of international education opportunities, um, like you said, you traveled quite a bit or staying in the homeland. So you traveled and then you came back to China. Um, what are the trends you've been observing amongst your own students in China? Are they going elsewhere and then coming home or staying home? I would say uh, I went abroad in uh, about 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. So things have changed a lot. Um, nowadays, I've seen more and more students, including my students, who decided to stay in China and doing their graduate, uh, graduate school in China and start their career uh, in China. So I would say this trend I've been observing so far is more students staying in China that, rather than going abroad. So uh, one reason is uh, apparent because of the COVID uh, pandemic and also because of the uh, political reasons. Mm, uh, and also one important reason I think for them is the change or economic growth of China in recent years. Hmm. Makes a lot of sense. I've seen also um, in my own university, they are um, initiating more collaborations with universities in China and even um, going as far as developing research centers with universities in China. So I see where you are coming from and I totally agree. Um, definitely more research is being led from that side of the world. So very, very interesting. And I'm glad that you have more students staying that side as well and increasing um, research outputs and um, collaborations with, you know, outside yeah, um instead of coming back. So um, recently you've moderated one of the EWL virtual forum sessions. And I just wanted to find out if you have maybe one or two or three tips for any young water professional who would like to get involved into this moderating online sessions. Uh, well, that, that is a, a very exp a good experience for me. And uh, it's actually my first uh, experience holding a session as a moderator. That is the first uh, advice I would give young water professionals who want to get into moderating online sessions is to practice. So practice mm -hmm. makes perfect. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that, but spend some time, think about this section, take it seriously. So and I know a lot of people have ex the experience of holding online sessions, but for young water professionals, your experience will be limited. Um, so ask the second advice is to ask for suggestions from experienced friends. Record your rehearsal, rehearsed uh, sessions, and then uh, maybe send one uh, friend, ask him or her, where, if you are the participant, what do you see the pros and cons of this uh, or advantages, a strength and the weakness um, as a moderator for this session. 
So the third uh, tip is to be proactive. You know, the online session is scheduled in two weeks, two weeks from now, and I can prepare maybe one or two days earlier, then I think that's too late. So be mm -hmm. proactive, start early, um, because a lot of things can happen. Uh, your speakers may be not available on a scheduled se uh, session, and you have to switch to another uh, speaker, or uh, you yourself will be busy in, uh, around these days, and you have very limited time to prepare for, the, for your session uh, when the deadline approaches. So be proactive. So mm -hmm. these are the three tips I would give. That is amazing advice. I think we can even put it into any other area of our lives to be proactive and practice makes perfect. I think that's something that we should all take um, from this, you know. So what do you think are the largest obstacles for women joining academia, especially in your field? In recent years, I've seen more and more women professors joining our field. Well, actually, starting from my PhD, I noticed that a lot of my friends in this in the in the same field as I do, and they're doing PhD are women um, uh, students. So from now from that point, I start to notice that uh, we can do as good as male scientists or engineers in the field, or even better. Um, but in terms of obstacles or uh, limitations, I, I definitely agree that uh, when uh, we are at the age, uh, especially after PhD study, you are at the age to, to start um, your family, um, getting married, having your kids. Um, so time management and work-life balance would be uh, a very, uh, a relatively bigger challenge for women uh, than the men. Uh, for myself, I have a I have a son, two years old, um, and during the past two years, I had to spend at least one half of my spare time on him, and then um, that means I cannot work the whole two days of during the weekend. I have to spend some time with my with my kids, and even in the evening, uh, I usually play with my kids. And then go back to the office, work for a while, two hours after he sleeps. That did not, at least did not happen for my husband. He, he can come back very late. Um, it's, sometimes I think maybe not in, not only in our culture, in, uh, in a lot of countries, in a lot of cultures, uh, people have higher expectations for women uh, to dedicate to their family and uh, uh, the kids. I think time management and work-life balance is, is the biggest challenge or obstacle for women. But I've seen very successful women scientists and engineers in our field. I think they are role models. Um, we should ask them for suggestions. I think that's, that, that's my answer. Yeah, that's a very good answer. I think I I agree with you so much because the work-life balance is something that we often struggle with because it doesn't change the metrics. We're still being measured the same way as um, our male peers would be measured. Um, and no one really takes into consideration the fact that more is required from us at home as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter, as a sister. So it's, it's something that I've also um, thought about, spoken about a lot. You know, the work-life balance is something that is a big obstacle. And you're right, there are many successful women. Um, they should be our role models. But I think all of us are role models to someone because we are all doing something that someone else says, wow, I wish that could be me. So amazing answer i agree with you 100 <laughs> percent. on a little bit of a lighter note even though i enjoyed the first few questions so much thank you for sharing your insights with us i would like to get into the fun side of things by first asking you how would your friends describe you the overall easygoing person and the responsive and the responsible person and my last question What's your favorite family tradition? 
we have a lot of family tradition in China, in our culture. Bring my kid, my son to see his grandparents on a specific day during、uh, each month,、um, and we spend time with them.、Um, and also, they they will my 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 father and his his grandfather will write some letters to him. So each month he will write something and mean attach a picture. And give that small letter to my son, and after many years, he will have this collection of many letters.、Um, that I think is a, a pass, a passage of family tradition、um, through the different generations. So that I think that's one of our family traditions. Wow, that's so cute and such a nice way of bonding. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of our interview. Thank you so much for sharing, giving us some insights into your professional, a little bit of the personal life as well. I really appreciated the time that you spent with us today, and thank you for being our first interviewee. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Bye.